Techvarium is back at the CS 2019 bringing you to the world of technology and innovation. Please enjoy this experience with us and let us know what you think about all these new techs in your comments down below. This CS 2019 coverage is brought to you by sellcashier.com. They compare iPhone prices online and give you the most cash for your iPhone. like to find out what uh, Qualcomm has prepared for the customers in the upcoming year as we're progressing into 2019, what the infrastructure is going to be like and how it's going to develop as we progress further into the year. Yes. Hey, hi, Ed. Thanks for being here. Uh, yes, 2019 will be a very exciting year, right? Because we'll be we'll see 5G finally coming to people's hands and they will be able to experience what they can do with 5G. So everything is ready, right? Uh, we announced uh, a few weeks back our Snapdragon 855 mobile platform, which is the industry's first commercial mobile platform that will power 5G devices. And we expect that virtually all the first wave of 5G devices coming on the early phases that say this year will be powered by Snapdragon 855. Actually, just a couple of days ago, we announced that there are already more than 30 designs in development 5G devices based on this Snapdragon 855 platform. Most of them are smartphones, so you can see that very soon we will see those devices being launched on 2019. Networks are already uh, as, as will be ready as well. Right? Uh, we'll see on 2019 networks launching across the United States, Europe, Japan, South Korea, Australia, and China. So even if you compare to the launch of 4G about 10 years ago, we have many more regions now committed and launching very soon on what will be the next generation of cellular technology, which is 5G. Mm -hmm. how, do we, um, how do we compete against um, countries like China? Because I know China's infrastructure is so much more advanced compared to the United States. What can we expect? Um, as customers in 2019 to actually have the 5G service. What well, you can expect that uh, even like prior kind of a big transition to cellular technology is that this will be a global launch, right? You will see in 2018 uh, 5G launching across different regions, right? For example, unlike what was the transition from 3G to 4G, in that time, if you remember, there were two competing standards, right? WiMAX and LTE. And at that time, of course, some of the carriers were taking a more of a wait and see approach in terms of understanding, okay, which standard will get more traction before making their investment commitments toward developing a new network. In this time, basically, there's just one single standard. It's 5G NR, and the whole industry is already rallying behind that. So, so that, what you're saying, it's going to be embraced by all major carriers, such as Verizon, We, 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 we expect that the adoption of 5G will be as fast, as fast, if not faster, than what we saw with 4G before. That's extremely exciting, and I guess there's at this point in time there's no solid rollout date. We just know that it's going to happen sometime through the 2019. It's the first, first half of 2018 where first we will half. see that, yes. Excellent. So we'll see the devices launching, we'll see networks launching, and that will continue, of course, through the course of the year. So Qualcomm is certainly a giant in this technology, and how do you guys compete against Intel? Because Intel has been, um, they have a lot, of, a lot in the works, which I honestly and personally favor Qualcomm just because that's what I have mm -hmm. in my pocket is the Snapdragon 845 but what's the plan for the competition I, I can speak th if, you, if you look at Qualcomm Qualcomm does not just create chips right we are a leading inventor in terms of the technologies that were required for 3g 4g and now 5g right we have been working on this for decades right if you look at 5g the initial inventions that relate to 5g go back to the 90s and then on the 2000s, basically the company created the first 5G specific inventions and we have been working now on the commercialization of 5G with uh, test devices like this one. This is a reference design that we created to help smartphone manufacturers create their own 5G devices using our Snapdragon X50 5G modem, right? Mm -hmm. So we think that because of our role that we have, have not just uh, delivering chips, but creating what's 5G today, uh, we have a kind of a, a significant lead in bringing 5G to reality. And to put it to the point, I will not specific, will not talk specifically about competitors, but we expect that 
virtually again all the first wave of devices launching this year will be powered by Qualcomm technology. As a company leading this, uh, do you guys get to influence any of the regulatory FCC decisions that happen at a higher level? We, we, we have lots of discussion with them. It's more of a collaborative effort in which when we have, we are technology exper expert, so a, not just FCC, but any regulatory body, we kind of uh, express and educate people by engaging these discussions in terms of helping the regulators make the best decisions in terms of the technology adoption. Is there any, um, what would be the hallmark of what you guys are developing as part of the next generation of Snapdragon as to the previous version? So in fact, 845, has an amazing battery life uh, on my Pixel 3 um, over 835 that was in the Pixel 2. What's 80, 855 is bringing that, to the... That's an excellent question because as it relates to 5G, right, it's a much more complex technology versus what you have with early generation. So you have to develop new assets to be able to enable 5G phones in these kind of form factors. So for example, on top of the um, X50 5G modem, right, we also have to develop the RF front end solution, right? This module that you have here is a module RF module that integrates transceivers, uh, RF components and antenna elements to be able to enable millimeter wave in phones, right? And basically you have to have a, an approach, a system approach that integrates the basement modem, the RF and the antenna all together. There are very few companies that are able to do that and we feel like very uniquely positioned to do that, not just solve the modem uh, challenges on the RF challenges, but also put them in the smartphone form factor. So if you look at this part here, we work on this smartphone form factor to enable millimeter wave uh, technology in 5G devices. And you see a couple of these modules, some of the sides, some of the top. Mm -hmm. So basically the device, whether you're grabbing with your hand or there's any obstructing the signal, there's always one module at least that is exposed so it can connect to the millimeter wave cell tower. Is something similar ever gonna go into production? Yes, basically that, that, this is what we build this is what to help do. manufacturers build their own 5G phones. Excellent. Actually in the booth here we have uh, some prototypes from some customers and it, this will be, phones will be in the hands of consumers in the matter of just So is it going to be phones. branded as a Qualcomm phone? No, we don't, we are not in the business okay. of making phones. We okay. use this reference design okay. to help manufacturers, more than 20 of them right now, build their own devices and bring very 5G very quickly to the hands of many people. Sounds great. Thank you so much, Ignacio. I really Thanks appreciate it, and our subscribers pleasure. do as well. Thanks Thank so you. much. Thank you. Techvarium is back at the CS 2019, bringing you to the world of technology and innovation. Please enjoy this experience with us, and let us know what you think about all these new texts in your comments down below.